Slumdog. I built this in various parts from Craigslist. I got them from all over the place. Rusty piles of parts that I put together. It's a late model 60 CJ5 chassis with 11 inch brakes all the way around. I got a 1975 V6 Buick 231 connected to a four speed SM420 transmission with a Dana 20 transfer case. I uh, put on a Mustang radiator. I found this MB grill, so I, I, I like the way it looks, so I put it on. Needed some lights, and then uh, I found those motorcycle headlights right there at Pomona Swamp Meet. Relatively cheap, so I put those on. I modified that seat. I dropped it and pulled it back because I'm kind of a big guy. I had to sew up the uh, seat cushion and the dust boots there. I also have a um, customized gear shifter with a K bar, uh, customized Mercy brake right there in the middle. Uh, real fun project. It's the slum dog. From our start point at Papa Tony's Diner in San Bernardino, we drive up Route 66 for approximately six miles in which we turn off on a dirt road, which is the Old Spanish Trail. The Old Spanish Trail will take us all the way up Cajon Pass. The Old Spanish Trail is an easy trail and is well maintained. We will pass right by the Mormon Rocks and continue on right underneath the 15 freeway. I'm sure in the back of your mind you're thinking, wow, what if I break down out there? Well, uh, I bring an extra tow bar and then I also have my uh, my kids running the uh, modern day Jeep behind me and they have another tow bar. So we have two tow bars. Um, so if someone does break down, we'll hook the tow bar up and we'll pull you out of there. And then uh, once we get up to the hardball, there's uh, auto parts stores galore. So.
The old Spanish trail puts us right up on the top of Cajon Pass and right up onto the hardball to Route 66. The Amboy Run is a relaxing drive across the desert using Route 66 going about 40 miles an hour the whole way. All along Route 66, we have gas stations, convenience stores, auto parts stores for anything that you might need along the way.
Sudden was the last gas stop before we hit Amboy. Uh, we usually gas up here. We use the restroom, get anything that we need, any supplies that we might need, and then uh, we head out to Amboy. Once we get to Amboy, we uh, park our vehicles, we get uh, acclimated to the area, we pitch our tent, we start relaxing, and drinking lamp is lit. Hello, Dan. How you doing? Good morning, Ernie. Welcome to Amboy. All right. Good Ta afternoon. Hello, guys. Hey, how you doing, Ernie? <laughs> All right. So tell us about your truck. What did you bring over to Amboy? Well, this is a 1952 M135 uh, deuce and a half made by GMC. This was a, one of the first post-war trucks. The advantage to this one was that it had a six-cylinder gas engine with a lot of power for a change for a military vehicle and a four-speed hydromatic transmission. So there's no clutch. So every time I get in it, my foot reaches to the floor to push the clutch in, and <laughs> still can't get over that. Wow. But it's a really nice vehicle to, to run out here, because uh -huh. for us, it was about 250 miles out here. Uh -huh. uh, so, and another 250 to get home. So and you came from? Uh, uh, Simi Valley. Al okay, Simi Valley, okay. Yeah. Some of us came from Riverside. So, so uh, he, he, he came along the way. Yeah, we picked him up <laughs> alongside the road. <laughs> so you just restored it, or? This was actually a barn find. Oh, I see. It was, it was listed for sale in the Northern California newsletter. Uh -huh. And I had already bought one that needed a ton of work. Wow. And this one was listed as running. Uh -huh. uh, so I, we took a drive up to Northern California and found it on a 6,000 acre cattle ranch. And they used it to transport the grandkids around until they outgrew it. Wow. Now all the grandkids want to do is ride in side-by-sides in a Humvee. So it was time to sell the deuce. Wow. So it's been running the whole time. It's only got 16,000 miles on it. Uh, it's still got beautiful paint. Uh, I had to add all the canvas and stuff back to it. But it's, uh, it's really a nice truck. And, and you're going to be taking it on here on a trip pretty soon? Yeah, and uh, well, let's see, in June, we're going to be heading up to Eagle Field in Dos Palos, which uh -huh. is an old Army airfield, and they've got an event, a Northern California event up there, so that'll be 300 miles each way for us, so we'll take that up there. Uh -huh. And then uh, the last of July, I'll haul it to South Dakota, and the MVPA is doing their uh, military vehicle convoy, the Yellowstone Trail. Wow. And that, that trail runs from Plymouth Rock to Seattle. And we're going to do from uh, uh, Aberdeen, South Dakota to Conneaut, Ohio. And in the middle, we're going to hit the MVPA convention, and we'll be there for a week with the, with the convoy. And we expect somewhere between 35 and 45 military vehicles on that convoy. So I'll haul this to South Dakota. We'll drive it to 2,000 miles on the convoy, and then we'll haul it back home from there. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. That's awesome. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate All right. it. All right, see you. All, All right. right. <laughs> this is my 51 CJ3A. It's got a bit of uh, hot rod history. It got its first V8 stuffed in it in 1957. It was a 3/8 overboard by 3/8 stroker flathead Merc. Wow. Then it got a Studebaker in it, V8. Then it got totaled in 61. My uncle went as far as to put another set of frame rails underneath it. It sat in his garage until I bought it in 72, and it's had a whole bunch of Chevrolets in it since. Wow. That's a 350? It's 350, and this one's mild compared to some that have been in it. It's had some fire breathers in it. Wow. Smoked the tires on this thing? 
No, it won't smoke the tires. <laughs> if I try to take off in a dead stop, it'll jerk the front end off the ground and immediately break the transfer case in half. Uh -huh. But it's got a narrowed Chevy truck half ton front end underneath it, a Dana 44, four wheel disc brakes, custom axles on a full floater in the rear. It sits on an old uh, street racer and loved going to the sand dunes. It's got a passenger car, Muncie four speed in it. Oh, okay. Cadillac tilt and telescopic steering column which if anybody's familiar with early Jeeps, you go down the road 100 miles, you know you've been down the road. So yeah, for real. You can take that thing and stretch it, pull it back, uh -huh. and lean back, and lean forward and get the kinks out of your back. Yeah. That thing's awesome. But that's about it. I love it. And what kind of axle are you running? The Dana 44, but it's got a truss over the top and a truss across the front because I found uh, that they bent two directions. But... All the hubs, spindles, and uh, rotors are off the front of a Chevrolet, and it's got custom axle shafts in it. Wow. That I had made. Because back in the mid 80s, when I had it down to the frame rails last, the uh, nobody was making a full floater for the back of a Jeep. Uh huh. And you just saw the Chuck Waller Jeep Club plaque. Yeah. They started in 56, they didn't incorporate till 58. But my dad and uncle were original members, and I still have my dad's Jeep. Wow. So, and you guys used to do trails all over uh, Southern California or everywhere? Arizona. Everywhere. Even some of them went, used to go into Mexico. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. Nice. How about your trailer? I mean, I think this is probably uh, one of my favorite aspects of your Jeep. Is and yes, pulling. the Sierra Club <laughs> does suck. <laughs> I can understand their point, but they take it too damn far. <laughs> There's things in our Southern California desert, just north of where we're at right now, that my kids will never see because you could not carry enough firewood in the wintertime. You could freeze to death. You couldn't carry enough water in the summer on foot. Yeah. Uh, this is, uh, it's got three fold down bunks. These are Navy surplus. The first one of these trailers that uh, was built like in 1950, and almost everybody on the Chuck Wallas had one. Wow. And uh, there was maybe two dozen of them built. Not exactly the same, but all the copies of uh, that one. There's your your grub box for your cooking utensils and uh, canned goods, potato chips, peanuts. There you go. The staple diet right there. And, uh, <laughs> got a lantern and a stove mounted in there so they don't get destroyed. It's got two fold-down bunks on the other side. It's also got brakes on it. Uh -huh. It's got four places for water or gas cans. And it's got a 16 gallon fuel tank in the front of it with an electric fuel pump that feeds the Jeep tank. Nice. So this thing can go forever. Well, I mean, Maybe. not forever, but <laughs> a lot longer than a regular CJ. I'll take a look at your other tanks down in there. Yeah, it's kind of buried right yeah. now. Very cool. All right, thank you for showing your, uh, your Jeep and your trailer. Uh, my name is Ken Johnson. It's a 1968 Kaiser Jeep M35A2, two and a half ton, often called a deuce and a half. Rated for two and a half tons off-road and five tons on-road. I got it about eight years ago. It had a faded out, really bad uh, Verdick desert paint job on it. And I sandblasted it myself in my driveway in my tracked house wow <laughs> <laughs> painted it myself hey, your neighbors love you uh. you know what i didn't have any problems until the last hour of sandblasting the very last part and then somebody called the uh, city on me <laughs> and that one hour cost me 100 bucks in the sandblast show oh man <laughs> but, uh, anyways uh it gets 10 miles a gallon it's got a 50 gallon tank about 35 gallons available I put 1,120 tires on it. Used to have 900s, which is the normal. So I gained about five miles an hour on the highway. Cruising the highway at my top speed's about 50, keeping the engine uh, RPMs down because it's a multi-fuel diesel. When I got it, it had the, the hoist in the back and the uh, vice on the front. So I think it was a field service truck. And it had the number eight stencil on the door, which means loaded for this. So it's probably a field service truck, probably carried tires and stuff. Over the years, I've added side lights, 
for safety at night because I'm doing at night quite a bit. I've added backup alarm and backup lights. And then this uh, last year I added the gun ring. I had to make the brackets and legs. And the ring a guy told me I could have it if I would help work on their M113 APC, get the charging system going. And I've called the guy numerous times and he's never told me to come out and fix it. So I got a ring for now. Wow. The 50 cal is a kit that I bought and put together myself. And it drives really good. It's been really dependable. It needs some heavy work soon. But other than that, I love driving. It's one of my favorite things I own. What about your trailer? What do you got? What are you, what are you pulling? Got an M1102, I think. It might be an M1101, but it's just your typical Marine Corps Humvee trailer. The only difference between the 1101 and 1102 is which Humvee you can tow with it. So, other than that, it's just a, a one ton off road Humvee trailer. Uh, it's only a 2004, it's fairly new. Got it for 1100 bucks out of Barstow. And I built the side rails based on uh, some measurements I took. And I've got bows and I've got a cover for it. Sweet. Are you gonna sleep in there tonight? That's my camper. Okay, that's your camper. Yeah. That's awesome. I've got the I've got the bows and a full tarp part for the cargo bed. And I usually don't do that because it's really hard for one guy to fold it up. Uh -huh. <laughs> Cooking. What are you eating, lady? Um, um, marshmallows. What's it called? Um, a sandwich. A sandwich marshmallow. A sandwich marshmallow. Mixed in cookie dough. <laughs> it's called s'mores. 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 Oh. S'mores, <laughs> baby. <laughs> My kids were excited to spend the night in a haunted ghost town. Everybody was up late last night having a good time. But we got up, we ate some breakfast, and we started heading back. So here we are in beautiful downtown Daggett, and some really interesting history about this uh, location is the blacksmith shop that's right down here in front of us. In 1905, U.S. Borax contracted with this blacksmith shop to build two sets of Borax wagons, exactly the same as what they used to bring him out of Mojave, because those original wagons were all deteriorated. They built one or two sets here in 1905, and those are now on static display out in Boron and then out in Mojave Desert. Four years ago, the Mojave Conservancy contracted with an Ingalls Coach Works up in Montana to build a new set of Borax wagons, exactly the same as the originals. That man came down here to take measurements off of those original wagons, came here to the same blacksmith shop and picked up the wheel roller to roll the tires for those uh, seven foot tall tires on those wagons. Got it out of this blacksmith shop, the same one, and he used it to build those new tires for the new wagons that were in the Rose Parade three years ago, pulled by 20 mules, and they were also at Mule Days two years ago, pulled by 20 mules. 
And those wagons are now on display outside of Bishop at the Railroad Museum. Interesting fact about Daggett. Wow, very cool. Back down the Cajon Pass using the old Spanish trail. The next Amboy Run goes in the fall. The dates are November 20 and 21. Please visit our website, www.theamboyrun.com. Just completed Route 66, 2021. Woohoo! If you want more information on the Amboy Run, please visit our website, www.theamboyrun.com.